The arrival of the D-Rex has been the subject of controversy in the Jurassic community for quite some time now, with public opinions being close to polarized, with some absolutely hating it, while the other half being speculatively optimistic. Today on Goji Center, we will bring the D-Rex back to the analysis platform and attempt to answer the following question. Could this animal actually be a good combatant in real life? That is, applying the rules of realism backed up by physics and biology. Of course, we will be discussing the combat abilities of the mutant from the fictional perspective as well. Then, in the second half of this episode, we will find out if this animal could do so much as to even hold its own weight, once set upon by reality. Not too long ago, soon after the trailer for Jurassic World Rebirth dropped, the Goji Center modeling team got to work to build a speculative reconstruction of the so-called D-Rex, based on the very few shots we were able to see. You may have also run into this model shown in other places. But turns out this model ended up being around 90% accurate. A couple of recent figure leaks have revealed that the D-Rex will have a slightly more bulbous shape to its head, heavier frontal body, and slightly more robust legs. With a slight touch-up on the coloration, we will be using this slightly updated model to speculate upon during the fictional combat analysis. From the moment where the Spino wrenched the bull's head out of place, it was clear that this precedent of having a big showdown between two dinosaurs was something that would be present in every film after that. Therefore, it wouldn't really be improbable that D-Rex will face another foe close to the end of the film, especially with a packed roster of other animals like three Spinos, a T-Rex, and sea-splitting Leviathan, just to name a few. This made us think, given the probable opponents that D-Rex could probably face, what about this animal could make it a force to fear in the battlefield? Coming up, the updated model will be studied, analyzed, and broken down into parts, but while our D-Rex here is being analyzed, let's all quickly give a big thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring our channel. What you're watching is the most insane representation of the intensity of military vehicles. You take control of tanks, aircraft, helicopters, and ships in epic immersive battles, with constantly improving state-of-the-art graphics, sound effects indistinguishable from real life. Each battle is a totally different experience that you will never forget. Control modern military tech, guided missiles, smoke screens, thermal vision, attack drones, and witness the irreparable devastation of nuclear strikes that devastate the entire map. Good news for you is that you can now play this multiplayer game on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. So there's no excuse not to take part in the best combat vehicle game of all time. Download for free using the link in the description if you haven't played yet or logged in for more than six months, and you'll get 100,000 in-game currency, special decorator Eagle of Valor, and more. Stop waiting and download War Thunder today. And seems like we are ready to break down the D-Rex. First order of business? double-checking the size of this thing. No official stats have been posted, so we could be in for some big surprises here. Now, because we are dealing with a franchise where animals fluctuate shot by shot depending on what looks better for the camera, we are going to be a bit flexible with our metrics, and thus potential damage inflicted by this animal. In this scene of a dockside confrontation, we can see that the D-Rex's knuckle-walking wrist is on level ground and distance with these people. The wrist is about on level with the actor's heads, and most of these peeps in this shot are around 5 to 5 foot 6 inches tall. Taking this to the model and using some leeway to be conservative, this mutant winds up somewhere between 25 feet tall in a more upright stance and 20 feet in a more lower position, either of which could give it a length of over 50 feet long. Using the volumetric analysis method we normally use on the channel, we are looking at a creature that shatters the previous predatory dinosaur record at over 25 to possibly 35,000 kilograms. It's worth noting that it is not impossible that this thing is even bigger, and even just a slight increase in overall height can result in the already gigantic mass more than doubling. If, for instance, the D-Rex is, say, 25 to 35 feet in height, we could be looking at a staggering 55 to 65,000 kilos. Now, it is actually very likely that the creators of this animal, as most movie creature artists and writers tend to do, will make the D-Rex a good deal lighter. Despite this, we feel pretty confident to say that D-Rex has a good shot at taking the title of biggest land predator in the franchise. As for lethality, that remains to be seen by official sources. This thing could wind up a horrifying warrior or a horrid wimp. 
but we do love showcasing violent horrors on this channel, so let's look and see what we can speculate from what we got. The arms. Unlike its likely genetic template, the T-Rex, the D-Rex is likely going to wind up leveraging those arms that give it such a huge size as some of its primary weapons and tools. Assuming that the estimates mentioned earlier are close to accurate, these arms could reach up to 20 feet, with pointed talons almost a meter long. Based on the volumetric number discussed earlier, each arm might have a mass of over 5 to 6,000 kilograms. Now, because we're talking about a fictional animal in a fictional universe, we won't expect physics to be present, imposing any limits. A longer arm like this will grant the D-Rex more reach. This attribute alone could be a big reason why this animal could be one of the best combatants seen in this franchise. To kill this animal, it would need to be wounded on any vital organ, that being a blow to the cranium, violently snapping the spinal cord, or piercing the torso and disemboweling. All maneuvers that must be done at close proximity. This is difficult to do against an animal that can keep you at bay at a 20-foot distance, risking catastrophic injury if the D-Rex manages to connect. That is, especially with those talons. In this simulation, you'll see what would more or less happen to a Parasaurolophus if struck with such force, assuming that in the film the D-Rex can whirl their arms around like this. Additional attack methods will be the ability to grab and manipulate objects with the lengthened digits, possibly picking up smaller creatures, bringing them close to the mouth, or perhaps even grabbing the legs or arms of the opponent, knocking it off balance. Note that this animal always has one forearm on the ground. Because this animal is forward heavy, it will be imperative for this creature to always keep one hand pressed against the floor, lest it risks toppling over. We do have a lot more to discuss regarding this weapon in this next section, but now that we've established that this animal will likely inflict blows with its arms, let's talk about those teeth. We can expect that the set of jaws reminiscent of Tyrannosaurus could also be pretty lethal, even with a less than ideal body. This franchise is frankly quite horrible at accurately showcasing the bite damage of each of their theropods. T-Rex bites constantly shrugged off by other theropods with ease, Indoraptor jaws without serrated teeth able to cleanly bite through an arm, and Indominus without any visible and appropriate neck and jaw muscle attachments to bite through a reinforced glass and steel spherical structure. All examples of Jurassic either overestimating or underestimating the bite forces these theropods should have. Our best guess is that the D-Rex will be no different. However, to its merit, a jaw structure shaped like this should still inflict a devastating bite force. A 2022 study by Manabu Sakamoto looked into the mechanics of theropod jaw muscles across different families. It was found that doubling the size of a Tyrannosaurus and keeping broadly similar jaw design results in a bite force increasing by about 53 to 60 percent. In the movie, we can expect D-Rex to be able to bite down with up to 80,000 newtons of force if it was built to withstand such pressure. We'll touch on this later when physics makes itself present, but for reference, if you still feel lost when we mention newtons, an adult, healthy human male can bite down with a force of anywhere between 150 to up to 300 newtons. A saltwater crocodile is more than 16,000 newtons, T-Rex ranging between 35 to 63,000. So, in the movie, the T-Rex should probably bite down with equal force, if not greater. These bites will likely be seen after the limbs get involved. With this mutant positioning the victim within biting range with its long limbs, biting down and wrenching chunks of flesh similar to its more, uh, less mutated cousin. Lastly, it's important to mention the use of sheer mass, its posture, and the tail. As mentioned already, we are talking about an animal anywhere between 25 to 35,000 kilograms. Putting physics aside, this mutant would be a force to be reckoned with on land. Using its body as a weapon, any other theropod getting hit by this charging animal would have to take forces similar to getting hit by a semi-truck, enough to disbalance their center of gravity and make it very difficult for an animal to stay standing. A clear height advantage means this creature would have a better view of its opponent when it comes to detecting points of destabilization and pretty much situational awareness. You may have heard that during combat it's always better to have the higher ground. In such cases, this is because you have a better view of what's going on during a confrontation and the fact that it's harder for the enemy to fight uphill. D-Rex, as long as it maintains itself in a wide posture, would have this advantage given to them by default. 
the mutant does still seem to have a fairly long tail like its genetic forebearer, not too much of a surprise considering the hindquarters don't seem to be as badly mangled. If it were ever to use this tail as a weapon, it would have to find a way to swing its body relatively quickly, which an animal like this likely wouldn't be able to do. Even in the fictional realm, moving in such a way would require this animal to rotate comically fast. So, that said, getting hit by the tail would rather be the result of getting in the way. With the volumetric estimate, this tail might have over 2,000 kilograms of mass in it. So, in the unfortunate event that another animal gets in the way of a tail moving a few meters per second, this would be like getting hit by a charging elephant. Accidentally getting hit in the face trying to flank the D-Rex might bowl over even some of the bigger carnivores in the setting. So, to conclude this section of the video, we can expect the D-Rex to be a good combatant given its anatomy, but more so because this takes place in a fictional universe not bound by the rules of physics. However, enter biological constraints and real-life science, and you'll find out why we haven't seen anything like this in the present day or in the fossil record. How functional is the body type of this mutant? The best way to describe it would be workable, but not ideal. To begin, let's set the tone as to how the rest of this episode is going to go. This animal would probably be slow as hell if it could even stand upright, that is. Let's remember that colossal juggernauts like the Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus were already pushing on how big an agile predator can get and still be able to move relatively quickly. The D-Rex would have an easier time holding up more weight with an extra set of support limbs, but this comes at the cost of agility. It all comes down to physics. A two-legged biped only needs to move half as many limbs to turn around as a four-legged quadruped. To be clear, plenty of quadrupeds are plenty nimble themselves, but this gets harder and harder after a certain size. This is probably one of the big reasons why theropod dinosaurs largely never went back to standing on all fours. Being bipedal gave them a much better ability to maneuver and accelerate quickly, at the cost of not being able to bear as much weight. Facultative bipeds like hadrosaurs can enjoy a bit of both worlds, but only if their center of gravity is situated close to the hip and they have sturdy, strong, and somewhat short hind limbs to be stable. These could easily change their stance without losing their balance. That tall, lanky build is great for uncanny monster design, but terrible at structural support and strength needed to keep itself in a fight. As mentioned already, with all that mass and with that tall of a stance, this means that when using those massive arms, the D-Rex would probably only be able to use one of its arms at a time. Taking both off the ground for too long would risk compromising its stance and stability, especially if wrestling with large prey or a thrashing opponent. What about that knuckle walking? This method of getting around is a specialized kind of locomotion that has developed multiple times amongst mammals and some other animals. But it doesn't appear theropod dinosaurs ever had this feature. After all, outside of maybe some spinosaurs, theropods were always agile bipeds. Short of adding DNA from something else, no amount of Hox gene manipulation should wind up giving an altered tyrannosaur a look resembling Primeval's future predator or the Death Angels. Realistically, an animal that was supposed to end up walking like this but ended up like this would have lots of trouble figuring out how to move around, let alone have the instincts to cope. Walking would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. Something that could make the body type a bit more viable would be if the edited genes ended up creating a second set of legs instead. It would still be very awkward and unbalanced, but the instinct on how to use those limbs properly would be there. In the real world, some animals have survived with horribly deformed and extra limbs in the wild before. Things get even worse when it's time to throw hands. Theropod dinosaur arms had plenty of range of motion, with a 2024 study showing that they were mobile and strong enough to pull the arms close to the body after snatching prey. When it comes to rotating the shoulder and the wrist, the range of motion is a lot smaller than that of a primate. The reason you see movie monsters like King Kong picking up and manipulating objects or swinging themselves around is because apes have a specialized shoulder anatomy, including a large ball and socket joint that allows them to whirl their arms around at almost 360 degrees. Back to the D-Rex, when this extra long limb developed, it might have been a mutated limb influenced by the longer, stiffer legs, resulting in an extra set of abnormally long forelimbs. 
Therefore, D-Rex would not have the ape-like range of motion. Instead, these limbs would simply swing up and down, forward and backward, with the only viable combat maneuvers being grasping and bludgeoning. Still, a multi-ton limb does mean that just getting smacked by one of these arms could produce forces of up to 900,000 to 1.2 million newtons with a perfect hit, comparable to having a Ford F-150 thrown at you at 40 miles per hour. In all likelihood, however, and again speaking in terms of plausible physics, an arm not capable of bearing this much weight to begin with would likely be injured if it tried smacking something this hard. As for the jaws, therein lies some other issues. Recall that in the fictional viability segment, we mentioned that D-Rex would bite down with 80,000 newtons of force. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. You wouldn't want to get killed by your own weapon, so the skull has to be ideally built to withstand all of that force. Nature took millions of years to fine-tune the great force of the theropod jaws, let alone develop in such a way that they can withstand the force of their own bite. In 2022, a study by Stefan Lautenschlager showed that almost everything in the skull, from the point of the jaws to the shape of the eye socket, has some aspect to help transfer all of that force into the bite, but also withstand that same force keeping it from breaking its own face. This would be especially true with Tyrannosaurus, which had keyhole-shaped eye sockets to help distribute such forces. Channel viewers might remember this was specifically why our hybrids like the Ultima, Imperatrix, and the 2.0 used other sturdy-skulled creatures like the Triceratops and Short-Tailed True in the mix. What does this mean for the D-Rex? While the jaw is mostly intact from the suspected Tyrannosaurus base, the upper half of the head is malformed and distorted. Considering this is also where the main jaw muscles like the adductor mandibuli externus muscle attach, the D-Rex might have a much lower bite force than the T-Rex of the same size. Too much force and this malformed skull could likely shatter. But let's say an actual animal in the shape, some kind of reptilian primate equivalent, did exist. Maybe minus the extra vestigial arms, of course. How big could this animal get? This too would probably be limited by the knuckle walking. There is a good reason why virtually every single type of animal that managed to break 16 tons had pillar-like legs built to hold them up. Examples being hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Shantungasaurus, the mega mammals like Paleoloxodon and Paraceratherium, and of course, sauropods. That's what's needed to maintain stability moving around a body that heavy and holding it up 24-7. If one wanted to keep this body form, dropping a lot of weight to be closer to some of the largest knuckle walkers in history, like the biggest of the big ground sloths might be a better range to start from and progress from there. Something along the lines of 6 to 10,000 kilograms is probably pushing the limits. There are still plenty of other problems with this malformed monstrosity. Teeth might be some of the hardest material in the body, but they are extremely breakable under the right circumstances. Teeth are, in essence, minerals, and certain minerals weaken when not hydrated. Tooth enamel, what covers the outside of the teeth, are one such example. This is why a vast majority of exposed tusks are mostly made of dentin, which is still sturdy but can withstand getting dried out more. For the D-Rex trying to chomp down as hard as a T-Rex could or more, it's going to need some of that enamel. Exposed teeth like this could cause the enamel to over time weaken and start fracturing. Split teeth, fractured roots, and nasty infections can follow, which would then cut short the lifespan of this predator. All we have discussed so far, it really is just the tiny tip of the iceberg. Beneath the skin lies a severely altered internal anatomy. Realistically speaking, if a mutated animal like this would ever exist, there would be a plethora of issues affecting things beyond mutated limbs and bone structure. The body can sometimes do remarkable things to cope with catastrophic injury or deformities, but it can only do so much. If the limbs are affected to this degree, it is certain that the nerves, muscles, and joints under the surface are also badly affected. Neural disorders, severe arthritis, and psychological issues can be very common with deformities this severe. Signals the brain sends to move just one set of limbs could get scrambled and distorted. Complex tasks like running might become extremely difficult, if not impossible. The D-Rex is a terrifying new addition to the nightmares mankind's folly has brought out in this franchise. In a world bound by real-life biology and physics, it might be best to describe the beast as surviving rather than thriving.